Hey traders, welcome back to Tiffany Trades Options. My name is Tiffany and I love to trade stock options. Today's Friday, February 19th, about 1021 Eastern Standard Time. If you are new to this channel, welcome. Thank you for being here. This channel generally focuses on options trading concepts for beginners. I run through trade demonstrations. I uh, offer trade ideas on how to grow an options trading account that is generally in the smallish range. I started this channel in March 2020, so it's been almost a year. And when I started the channel, I only had $500 in this particular trading account. I have slowly grown it over the last 12 months with a combination of options trading and personal deposits of um, capital contributions. And so it's, it was a dual, dual growth, dual purpose um, endeavor to get it from $500 to now $4,200. My general style of options trading includes defined risk strategies and cash secured puts. And when I say defined risk strategies, I'm generally referring to put credit spreads or call credit spreads. I will occasionally buy call debit spreads, but I'm not really buying options outright. Um, I'm primarily selling options to correct, collect credit and take advantage of theta and market momentum. So this channel focuses primarily on options selling strategies as opposed to options buying strategies. Do not do any YOLOs. Um, I'm very, very rarely buying any long options outright if they're not paired with something else like a call debit spread or even a short put spread with a long call option, which is something I, is a little bit more of an advanced strategy that I can talk about later. So that's just to give you a little bit of a background on, on Tiffany Trades Options and, and the general options trading concepts that you're gonna see on this channel. And before I get into today's trade demonstration, please do me a favor and hit the like button. It really helps this channel reach other like-minded people like yourself. It reaches broader audiences through the YouTube algorithm and it would be really helpful and I would really appreciate it if you did that. And the question of the day, since I want to learn more about my viewers and where you are from, please um, in the comments, let me know where you're located, how long you've been trading options and what is your favorite options trading strategy. Okay, so since today's trade video is going to be a trade demonstration, I am going to open two positions. One of them is gonna come from Tiblio, which is a trade, rec trade recommendation service that I am affiliated with and use pretty frequently in my own personal trading. And another one is gonna be a trade that I select myself. A couple of things I'm gonna cover in this video that is based on viewer feedback in the comments from the past few videos and I've been keeping track is, um, first I wanna go over position sizing, how much of my buying power do I generally try to consume or want to consume, how many positions I choose to carry in a particular account. The second uh, point I'll try to cover is my profit goals per account. I personally have probably too many options trading accounts but they all serve different purposes and one of them I'm starting to wind down um, and so because they have varying sizes and varying goals, I have different profit goals in each account. And so I'll go over that. Um, I'm going to go over stop losses and why I don't personally use them. And then I'm gonna go over the criteria for the stocks that I trade options on. I will show you how to open a trade and how to set a limit to close order. And then finally, how I log my trades so that you can keep up with the Tiffany Trades Options Trading Journal. So Tiblio is a trade recommendation service that offers high probability trades that ensure a greater chance of um, success. They generally choose a little bit more conservative amounts of credit to be collected. So you are guaranteed, not guaranteeing, because you can never guarantee anything in the options trading world, but you are being recommended trades that are generally in the 70% or more probability of profit, which generally ensures that you have a greater chance of success in the trade. With that though, is that you are going to generally be collecting a little bit less credit than you otherwise would if you were deciding to open a slightly more aggressive trade that is potentially in the 60% range or maybe even in the 50% range and closer to at the money. So the trade-offs um, will depend on your personal risk tolerance and what you like when you are opening options trades, but I'm going to open a Tiblio recommended trade just to kind of go over the, some of the updates to their platform and, and let you know what, what it looks like so that you can decide if this is a service that you want to um, sign up for yourself. 
it is $24.95 a month and you get 30 day money back guarantee. So you get to try it out for 30 days. And if you're not completely satisfied, they'll give you your money back. And for full disclosure, I am an affiliate. So the link that is in the description of all of my videos is an affiliate link. If you sign up using my link, I will be receiving a small commission, but that does not mean that the service is more expensive for you. It's just a way to say thank you for letting you know about Tiblio as a service and um, finding ways to help me out and help the channel grow. So I did post a couple of videos on this service previously and their platform has changed a little bit over time. They're always looking for ways to improve it. And so um, if you look at those old videos, you'll see that it looks a little bit different than it does now. And so just to give you a quick layout of what's going on, on the left side of the screen right here, you have credit spreads, naked puts, and long calls. Then you have your trade board. And this is my Tiblio trade board right here. I currently have one cash secured put open in NEO in my Think or Swim account. I'm waiting to see what happens with that. The details of this trade are that it is a March 12th, 50 short put. I collected $194, commissions were 65 cents. I'm waiting to see how NEO does between now and March 12th. I will try to close out for 50 or 55% profit. And I don't know when that will be because that sometimes um, it takes a little bit longer for trades to get there. One of the more recent updates for Tiblio is that they have created a Discord channel. So if you are a Tiblio member, you can join their Discord and interact with other members of the Tiblio community. I am on there. I'm not super active yet. I've been a lot busier at work than I would care to be. Um, but that is a new update that they have offered for their members, which you can see right here is the Discord community. So I'm going to, let's see. So the Tiffany Trades Options account currently has $4,200 in cash. I'm gonna actually gonna open up two credit spreads today. I'm gonna open up a Tiblio credit spread. And I'm gonna come over here to this credit spread tab. And I'm gonna download the data for, for today. If you look at the Tiblio trade board recommendation, you'll see that there's a lot of info to be seen on a single webpage, which for me as a viewer, I don't, I don't digest information quite well that way. So I tend to download their spreadsheet. And then I will filter and then I'll sort by symbol. And I generally want to take a take a look and see what symbols Tiblio is recommending for that particular day and see if there is anything that I am familiar with and that I have familiarity in trading with. I personally try to trade stocks that are well-known companies that have a long, durable history of performance. I will stick to companies that are in the Dow or in the S&P 500 or NASDAQ, anything um, that sort of encompasses your large, well-known companies. I personally stay away from biotech, up-and-coming companies, small tech. I try not to deal in the speculative or the the meme stocks so to speak i mean i will say that i did do a little small play in gme but that was only for like a two-day swing so i i generally am st staying away from that type of stuff so as you can see from this excel spreadsheet there are 276 tablio recommended trades for today the highest concentration includes spy and the queues one thing to note is that the market is about flattish, just a little bit up today, a little bit green. This is probably a good day for a put credit spread. Put credit spreads benefit from the passage of time if the stock stays flat or goes up. So if I have a put credit spread and the stock position doesn't do anything for a while, I still benefit. If the stock continues to increase in price, then I also benefit. So I am personally a big fan of put credit spreads. Put credit spreads have been good in a market like this because it has generally been a bull market and I'm not gonna fight the trend. So with that said, I'm going to filter out the calls. I am also going to filter out the credit. I want a credit greater than $1.
So these are all of the Tiblio recommended trades for the day that have a credit of $1 or more. Of these tickers, the options that I am the most familiar with include Boeing, Netflix, Neo, NVIDIA, and PayPal. And because there are more Netflix and more NVIDIA suggestions here, I'm that those are the trades that I'm going to explore. All right, so March 19th. This is the Tastyworks web browser platform. Tastyworks does have a desktop application, but I don't generally use that because I've found the Tastyworks website to be very easy to use and I've gotten so used to it that I feel no reason to change my, my ingrained habits. So um, this is working from the web browser platform. But if you like the additional functionalities of desktop applications, that is something that is available for you if you want to try it out. So there are two ways to set up an options trade on Tastyworks. This is the curve view. And to be honest, I don't set up trades right here because I don't find it um, as easy to use as looking at the options trade through the table view. So this is what an options chain looks like. On the right side, you have your puts and on the left side, you have your calls. And to select your expiration on Tastyworks, you come over here to this little date tab and you'll see all the available expirations for the particular stock ticker that you are looking at. And in this case, Tiblio has recommended that the NVIDIA trades are for March 19th expiration, which is 28 days away. If you have been a viewer of this channel for a while, you'll know that in the past I have said that I generally try to open trades that are 30 to 60 days away. With Tiblio, they definitely recommend trades that are more near term. So I'm not opposed to breaking my own personal rule every now and then if it ensures that the trade has a pri high probability of success. And it will potentially close a little bit faster because there's less time um, to wait for the expiration. So when I was looking at the spreadsheet, it had 55 and 50. Let's just confirm. So right now it says uh, 145 credit to be collected. So here's the 55 short, 55 long option. Um, at the time that this spreadsheet was generated, it was going for a recommended credit of 138, and it is a 75% probability of profit. It looks like the numbers have updated just a little bit, so and that's that's normal and that's totally fine. See, right here. So this is just an example of how the, the numbers update um, pretty frequently based on stock price, based on options volume, based on the number of participants in the market. So I'm not going to fret over a $3 change. I'm going to leave this exactly as is. Now it just went up to 140. So you'll see this is, this is pretty common for um, the midpoint of options prices to change pretty regularly throughout the day. So to set up this trade, this is a put credit spread. So because the puts are on this side, you want the short put to be the higher number and you want the long put to be the lower number. And a put credit spread is generally a bullish strategy. So you benefit from the passage of time if the stock stays flat or increases in price. If you want to explore your probability of profit as well as your other metrics related to your trade, you can come to the curve view. You can select this little arrow button right here. It will show you that your probability of profit right now is 69%. This chart over here on this side is the estimated number of days it will take you to get to 50% of your profit. So assuming I collect $1.35, that's about 70 bucks for the 50% range. So it could take anywhere from one to expiration, one to 20 days um, or 28 days. And you have a greater probability of getting there somewhere in the five to 15 day range. This is your max loss for the trade. So basically th the way that you can calculate your max loss is you can take the widths of the strike. So in this case, the widths are $5 wide. So 50, 555 minus 550, which is five. You subtract the amount of credit you collect, which is 133. So 500 minus 135 equals $365. So that is the maximum amount of capital that you have put on the table in case the trade moves against you and you're unable to mitigate or close the trade for a profit. 
So I'm going to review and send. So if we open this trade, I'm going to collect $136 in credit. My potential max loss is $364. I'm going to reduce my buying power by $366.32. The expiration is 28 days away. This is a con to confirm that you, I am selling one NVIDIA put vertical credit spread. So this order is working and I'm going to let it sit and do its thing before I make any adjustments. And so I'm going to get into the first point of position sizing. So because this account only has $4,200 in cash in the account, for position sizing, for me personally and my personal risk tolerance, when I open put credit spreads, I am starting initially with spreads that are $5 wide based on the account size. So when I first opened this Tiffany Trades Options account and I only had $500, my put credit spreads were only $1 wide and that is relative to the amount of cash and buying power that I had in my account. But as your account slowly starts to grow over time, you can certainly decide when is the right time for you to increase the widths of your strikes. So now that the account has close to $4,500, I'm fine with $5 wide put credit spreads. But I generally don't want to open more than two or three positions at a time because I want to make sure that I have enough buying power left over in case I have to manage these trades in a way that requires me to ultimately consume more buying power down the road. And what I mean by that is sometimes, and this does happen, but not often, sometimes the trades will turn against me. And this is my personal preference based on my view of the market, but I generally have a very bullish outlook in the market. So if a trade turns against me and I still think that I have some faith in the stock for turning around, I will more often than not roll the trade out I will roll it down in strikes, but then I will also increase the widths of the spread. And so that requires consumption of additional buying power. I only do that in the cases where I'm very confident that the trade is going to turn around. If the trade has completely just obliterated both of my call strikes and has like just sunk so far low that there's really no point of return in the next two to three months that is the situation where i will just cut my losses and move on but for the most part i'm very have a very bullish outlook and i that is how i will mitigate my trades in the case that they turn against me and so for position sizing i generally try not to carry more than two or three trades on and on at a time in this account because i don't want to consume more than 50 percent of this buying power amount in the event that i have to mitigate the trade such such that it consumes more buying power so that's my personal preference for this particular account. That will change for my E-Trade account, which is a larger account. And I will admit that that account has been around the longest. I've done a combination of dividend investing as well as options trading in the account. So it's a multi six figure account that I have spent a lot of time working on. I There I'm fine with holding lots and lots of options positions because I have lots and lots of buying power but I still try to maintain my personal 50% of buying power rule. Sometimes I don't always listen to that, but um, I have been burned in the past with not leaving enough buying power on the table and having to take giant losses and having to slowly recover from there. And if you want to know what I mean, go check out the how much money I traded op I earned trading options in 2020 so you can get, an exp get a feel for how big my losses were around the, um, the March 2020 sell-off. Profit goals per account will vary in my IRA account because I can't deposit more than $6,000 per year. I treat that account very conservatively. So if I collect $500 in credit trading options, I am perfectly fine and happy with that. I don't carry more than five to seven positions on in that account at a time. It's only got about $25,000 in it now. Um, so I'm very happy to slow roll that account. For my E-Trade account and uh, the personal margin account that I have with my husband and our joint um, funds, I'm a little bit more aggressive in those accounts. My profit goals for the E-Trade account are a minimum of, I mean, lately it's been a minimum of $4,000 a month just based on the size of the account, but that could easily vary depending on market conditions and what I have to do. And for the account that I trade with my husband, my profit goals for that account are $1,000 a month. But lately I've been um, collecting about 1500 bucks. 
So these account goals are all personal. So make sure that you take into consideration your own personal risk tolerance and the things that you are thinking about when you're trading options, what your ultimate goals are, what you are using your money for, your long-term horizons. I am not paying bills with my options trading proceeds yet. So I get to just take all that money and continue to trade options or invest it into stock that I want to own. But I do envision a time in the very near future, sometime in 2021, maybe even at the beginning of 2022, where I'm going to be done with my corporate job and I will be using at least one of my accounts to pay my bills. And so you have to adjust your options trading strategies, your risk tolerance, your profit goals based on what's happening in your life and what works for you. So the second account, the second trade that I'm going to open is going to be in Square. Square actually has earnings next week, and I am super bullish on this stock. I'm not going to go into my research or my reasoning because I think that um, everyone should be, be responsible for deciding what to trade and doing their own research. But I will say that I own shares of Square in my IRA. I've done very well. Every time I've traded put credit spreads or cash secured puts on Square, they've done well. And it's been a consistent money maker for me lately. And so I'm effectively going to put on an earnings play in Square. Square's earnings are next week. And because that is so close, I am likely to co collect a pretty decent amount of credit. And it has had a pretty decent run up over the last week or two. I, there is a possibility that it'll have a pullback. I mean, it looks like it's in the overbought territory right now because you can see that the statocastics and the RSI are showing that it's overbought and it could have a pullback. And that's totally fine because I am generally very bullish on the stock. So even if it does have a pullback, I have a long-term outlook that it will continue to increase in price over time. I'm fine with pullbacks. They don't bother me. If my stock, if my put credit spread is tested, that's fine. I, I'd be happy to work through that process with you guys and show you what that means. So because Square has earnings on the 23rd, it's interesting to see that the IV rank is not super high right now, but perhaps that will increase as it gets closer in time to earnings. I'm going to stick with my normal options trading strategy and focus on an expiration that is 30 to 60 days away. March 19th is the monthly, the 26th is the weekly, April 1st is the weekly, and then April 16th is the next monthly. I'm going to try to open something in the March 26th or the April 1st range. This brown ruler color right here indicates the expected move of the stock between now and March 26th. So if you are trying to decide what could potentially be the best strikes to select and you want to stay within the expected range or if you even want to be outside of the expected range, take a look at this little brown um, part of the grid right here. On this side of the screen, this is the volume. So you can see which strikes are being traded the most today. So it looks like right now 260 has got pretty high volume. The next highest, at least on the put side, is 245. And then you have some high volume, 275, 270. It looks like this. there might be some put credit spreads going on right here. And the same thing on this side, if you are interested in calls or call debit spreads or um, call credit spreads for whatever reason, which I personally wouldn't do on Square because I have a bullish outlook. But I, if you wanted to do a call debit spread, that might work out. Um, you can see the volume over here. If you ever wanted to change these metrics right here, you go to graph down here on the bottom, and then you can select if you're interested in the open interest. This is another interesting metric to check out. So this is the number of contract positions that are currently open in Square for March 26th at these particular strike points. If you wanted to get more detailed information on those total numbers, I generally come into E-Trade I will sometimes go into TD Ameritrade to take a look at this um, or Thinkorswim to be more specific. I like E-Trade because of the white background and um, the numbers are pretty easy to find and read. So this is the options trade options chain on E-Trade and you can see that the open interest numbers are here on this side. This is the volume for the 
the day. So as we can see, the volume for the 260 is about 21. And then open interest on the call side, volume on the call side. I did make a video on how to find open interest and volume and what those numbers mean. I will say that these numbers would potentially put Square in the category of a illiquid or um, low volume, low open interest stock. But I do believe that that could be attributed to the fact that this is a pretty recent weekly and a good portion of traders are trading nearer term expirations. And so I'm not going to be opposed to the idea that this is lower volume, lower open interest, because I have no doubt that as it gets closer in time, these numbers are going to increase. But if you wanted to see a comparison to March 19th, you can see that March 19th is a monthly expiration. It has tons of open interest, some pretty decent volume. I wouldn't say tons of volume, but enough to justify that March 19th could be a potentially good expiration to select. But it's only 28 days away, and I'm trying to open the NVIDIA trade there as well. So I'm going to choose a slightly later expiration. April 16th is the next monthly following March 19th. And so you can see that there's a little bit more open interest and volume here as well. But that's 56 days away, and that's a little bit too long for me at this point, particularly because I want to be able to do more options trading demonstration videos, and I don't want to do them every 56 days or, or every 30 days. So we're going to stick with March 26th. I want to try to select strikes that have some decent volume. Nope, I don't want to sell two of those. That would not be good. Okay, so this is what it would look like if you were going to select a very aggressive put credit spread on Square. The fifth, You have only a 51% probability of profit, but you can collect about $250 in credit. So that's about a uh, one to one, uh, risk one, lose one ratio. That's a little bit more aggressive than I would prefer, particularly because earnings are coming next week and there is the potential for at least some pullback. I'm going to go down I think I'm going to go down to 260, 255. 188 is more than one third of the widths of a $5 wedge strike. So that's generally ideal for me. It may not be ideal for you. You might want to collect more or you might want to increase your percentage of your chances of success by going down a little bit further and collecting a little bit less credit. So just evaluate whether or not you want to collect more credit, whether or not you want to have a higher probability of success, your outlook on the stock and what you think the stock is going to do, understanding that no one has the crystal ball and no one really knows exactly what's going to happen. But um, if you have been paying attention to a particular stock and you have seen it trending in a direction that uh, you're pretty confident is going to continue to go, these are all factors that you should think about when you are opening your options trade. So I'm fairly bullish on Square. I like the stock and I'm not trying to play off of Roaring Kitty or DFV, but um, it is a phrase that is applicable to a wide variety of stocks. And so I'm going to open, I'm going to try to open a 260-255. These little symbols right here are an indication of illiquidity. It kind of looks like a little water droplet, so liquid water. Um, and that makes sense because we just went over the open interest and the volume for the position for the day. The bids and the asks are pretty wide. So I'm just going to try to hang out around this range and see what happens. I might try to go down to like 183. It's only about a few bucks off of the midpoint, which is fine. If I open this trade, the expiration is March 26, 35 days away. I will collect $183 in credit. My potential max loss is 317, and it will reduce the buying power by $319.31. All right, so that one just got filled pretty quickly, which is cool. Got filled at 183, which is the price that I selected. And there could be something to be said about selecting a few dollars below the midpoint. I do that when I really do want to get filled right away. You don't have to do that. If you want to leave it at the midpoint like I did right here and wait for it to get filled, that's something you can do as well. That's totally up to you. That's a personal preference of mine. Let's take a look at what's going on with NVIDIA. 
So it looks like the midpoint just went down a little bit. I mean, as I said, I'm not going to cool over 3 or $4. It's close-ish to the Tibulio recommendation, and it still has a 70% probability of profit. 72 now. Both of those trades have been filled, and if you want to examine the activity, you come over to this little activity button, and you click filled, and you can see what credit has been collected. And lately, Tastyworks has been a little bit glitchy, so that number is not right. Whenever I see something like that, I just hit the refresh button. I'll come back, and it'll correct itself. So for the square position, I collected 183. For the NVIDIA position, I collected 132. So sometimes if you lower your fill prices a little bit lower than the midpoint, you will still get filled at slightly higher than what you selected. So I got a dollar more than what I was willing to take the trade for. Come over to history and check out your fees. So the fees for the square position are $2.31 and the same thing for NVIDIA. I'm going to come to the Tiffany Trades Options Trade Journal and log each of these trades, factoring in the fees collected from Tastyworks. This is the Tiffany Trades Options Trade Journal, and there are links to this trade journal in all of the descriptions of all of my videos if you want to keep track, come back and check, see what's going on, see what I've been trading um, in between videos. That's, that's there for you to check out. I will say I'm not advising this to be a buy recommendation. Please do your own research. I'm not a financial advisor. Um, this is just to give you a preview of what I've been trading if you want ideas, but please do not take this as an indication that I, you should buy or sell any, any particular security or stock. After fees, I collected 180.69 for Square and 129.69 for NVIDIA. I'm going to enter these right here. I did open a NVIDIA put credit spread using a Tiblio, Tiblio recommended trade a couple of weeks ago and it worked out well it was about the same price and I collected I kept $70 of that trade so we'll see how this works out if you want to see the legend for these acronyms you just scroll down in the trade journal and you see what um, I have listed right here so the Tiffany Trades Options Trade Journal is up to date if you want to come take a look. Today I collected $310.38 in credit, opening two trades, one from Tiblio and one as my own personal um, trade. On the trade board, I'm going to open a vertical. And I'm going to save. And so on Tiblio, if you are trading in a single stock pretty frequently, you're not going to see all of them listed out individually. What you will see is you will see an open position here and then closed the closed number. So I've opened up a couple in Netflix. I've opened up a couple in Apple. So now NVIDIA has one open, and if I want to look at the details of the trade board for NVIDIA, I can see all of the activity that I've um, taken on NVIDIA using a Tiblio recommendation trade. And so I sold one on that expired February 19th, and I bought it back for $0.65, cents. and so this is my next trade that expires March 19th. So I'll wait for Tiblio to send me an alert. Um, I generally don't wait for the alerts from Tiblio because I'm going to show you how I set limit orders. So to set a limit to close order, this is a personal preference. I generally set them because sometimes I will not be at my computer at market open to manage trades and or I'll be in meetings or I'll be otherwise occupied. And so sometimes I just want the activity to take care of itself while I am away. I am a swing trader, so I do not set stop losses on my put credit spreads or on my cash secured puts because with cash secured puts, I would be perfectly fine being assigned the stock if that is the direction that it, the option buyer decides to go. I never let my options 
get to expiration day. If it's at least seven days before expiration, I am managing the trade and sending it out further in time if it hasn't reached its 50% profit capability. And I don't fret or worry if my stock options are being tested because I have faith in my outlook. I have faith in my strategy. I have faith in my ability to mitigate the trades if it turns against me. And 95% of the time, they ultimately work themselves out if I have to roll them out or roll them down and widen the strikes. So I don't set stop losses. And I've been asked that question before about how to set them up. I don't set them up in, in Tasty Works, and so I wouldn't be able to show you how to do that. But it is my plan to show you how to set up a stop loss in Thinkorswim in the near future. However, keep in mind that stop losses could punch you out of a trade faster than you anticipate. If you were, okay, so how do I explain this? If you were a swing trader, generally speaking, you should be able to withstand the variations in the market such that if your position is being tested for a couple of days, if it looks like it's losing money on paper, but you still have 35 days till expiration, the stock is still so far out of the money, but you know it's not profitable yet, stop losses might not do you any good because it, you know, Square could drop to 265 and this could look like it's losing $135 on paper, but I still have time in the trade for it to work itself out. And so I'm not worried if on paper it looks like it's losing if it's not actually losing, which is why I don't like stop losses for swing trading because there could be the opportunity where Square just has a really bad day after earnings. And then the next week, people are like, this is a great buying opportunity and Square like totally turns around. So this is a personal preference of mine. Um, it's something that you guys should think about if, if that is why you are using stop losses, if you want to preserve your capital. My recommendation would be to open up trades that are much further away from the money so that you have a lot more room to absorb any potential down moves if it's a put credit spread, if it's a put credit spread or even up moves if it happens to be a call credit spread or or whatever your particular strategy is. But that is why I don't use stop losses for swing trading. However, if I was a day trader, which I am not, I would have a completely different outlook on stop stop losses. And I highly encourage you to go check out the other YouTube videos of day traders who are using stop losses and who have different perspectives of risk management and why they are using them. I think stop losses are hugely important in day trading and they have really important roles. And I think that is, is definitely something that is necessary. It just depends on your... Um, what your options trading strategies are. So that is why I do not trade and use stop losses. But back to limit orders. So on the Tastyworks web browser platform, it's very easy to set a limit order. You select both of the legs. You don't have to click control or anything. You just hit select and it'll highlight both of them for you. And you have the option to close the position or close for profit. And generally what I do is I will select close at a percentage of profit. And I'll, depending on how I feel, I can leave this as the default to 50, or I can increase it to 55, or if I want to be really bullish and collect as much credit as I'm willing to take, go up to 60%. It's totally up to you. If you want to collect less credit and have more occurrences, you can go down to 40%. But I'm just going to set this for 55% and see what happens since this is effectively an earnings play. I also personally like round even numbers, so I can set this to 80, or I can set it to 85, which... I think I'll do. That's still more than half of the um, credit to be retained if I uh, set it to 85. So I'm going to set a good till cancel. So the way that you make sure that your time and force is set to GTC, which means good till canceled. You can set it for a day if you want, but that just means at the end of the day, if your position hasn't gotten to 85 cents to debit, then it's the position, the order is going to expire. And because this is a long dated trade, I have 35 days till expiration. I'm setting a good till cancel. For the order type, it is a net debit because I collected a credit to open this trade and I'm going to buy this back to close the trade. When this position closes, I will increase my buying power by $414.69. I will have a realized profit of $98. I'm going to send that order. And that is what a limit order for good to cancel looks like. I'm going to do the same thing for the NVIDIA trade, except 
instead of 55%, I'm going to do 50% because this was a little bit less credit. If I close this for 65 cents, I will keep 67 cents. And don't forget about the fees that are associated with opening and closing the transaction. So it'll be about $65 to keep at the end of the day. I will increase the buying power by $434.69. Okay, so I have two trades on in this account now. Over here is the capital requirement screen. You can get to that by clicking this little, looks like a little book button. These are consuming $1,000 in buying power collectively. And I currently have $3,597 in buying power left. I personally could, if I wanted to, open up another put credit spread, but I'm not going to do that today for this video because it'll just continue to drag on. Or I can look for a naked put in the Tibulio trade board and try to trade something that has a super low strike, like $12 or $15, and still feel pretty comfortable with the remaining buying power left over. That would be about $2,000 of buying power. But I'm not going to do that today either. I'm just going to wrap this video up for you guys and just... Um, you know, we, we can discuss that in the next video. So I now have $4,500 in cash in this account. I am anticipating giving back half of the amount, a little bit over half of the amount that I collected. So about 150 bucks once these trades work themselves out. If for some reason Square does not work out for the earnings play next week, I will certainly record what happens and what I decide to do. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful for you. I've heard from a lot of you that you guys like the trade demonstration videos. So if there is anything that I touched on in this video that you have questions about, please do let me know in the comments below. I know this was kind of fast. I And I know that I have a lot of new viewers here as well. So some of it could have been repetitive. And if you've been a long time viewer, thank you for sticking around. Um, but, you know, some people do want the trade demonstration videos and want to know my thought process and how I select the stocks that I choose. And so um, I'll incorporate these a little bit more. And um, if you have any questions, if you need anything from me, if you want to see a particular trade set up again, let me know. And finally, I just want to give a shout out to the couple of people that have joined my Patreon in the last couple of months. I appreciate that. The Patreon is linked in the description below. It has... A discord feature attached to it which is very small right now just me and and so far one other person which is totally fine and i am on my patreon posting my trading my stock trades which are infrequent but there are some as well as giving you guys access to the transaction history spreadsheets that you see in the videos and particularly in the video for um, how much money I traded options. I will be doing that on a monthly basis and then as well as just other general options commentary, what's going on in my accounts. So that's a little bit more of an inside look into a broader look at my accounts. If you're interested in that, check out the link below. If you want to just chat with me on Discord, that's a feature that's attached to my Patreon as well. With that said, thank you guys so much for being here. I'm really happy that you're here. I'm really happy to be helping a number of people learn about options trading and get them started on their options trading journey. I can tell you with full confidence that options trading has absolutely changed my life. And with that, I will be making a giant career change sometime in 2021, which is slightly terrifying, but also very exciting at the same time because... I've worked really hard to get where I am, and I think it's finally time to move on to do something that I actually want to do and not because I have to do. So with that, options trading was one of the integral factors that got me to that point. So I'm really happy to share options trading with you as as new options trader, or even if you're an experienced options trader, it is um, once you get the proper fundamentals down and, and um, you've developed your own personal strategy and you can evaluate your risk tolerance, it really is a life-changing thing to be doing. With that said, I hope that wherever you are, you're safe, you're well, you're healthy. If you are in the South or on the East Coast and you're getting dumped on with snow, please stay warm. And as always, I hope that you guys have a great weekend and I will be chatting with you soon. Take care. Bye.